to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Like the video you are... You want to compel influence? It has to be at the instance of the supernatural. What is the supernatural? Outsourcing results and possibilities beyond this three-dimensional realm. I can tell you that as believers, we have an advantage. We can tap into the supplies and the blessings that reside with the heavens and produce results here on earth that is not given unto mere men to produce. This is powerful. They follow Jesus because how do you meet a woman who has been down of fever and he simply holds her lovingly and says stand up and it is done I will follow such a man notice that they even wanted to make him king these people were hungry and he multiplied loaf and he said we will make you king immediately whether it's election time or not this level of results we want it can I tell you this I hate to say this, but it is unfortunate. You will so be surprised at how many believers still patronize native doctors. I don't mean in disguise, direct native doctors. You turn back and enter. There are many people, church goers. You know why? Because before they got born again, that was what was there. And it seemed to have some results. The man will give a charm and make concoction and you will find out that people are coming to buy the products. Now you tell them, throw away that charm. And he threw it away. And find out that he was suffering. His life became miserable. One day, he will go back and say, Sir, I don't know if you are still available. Let me share with you a story. Am I boring you? True story. Back then when I was still in Zaria, one woman, true story now I used to have counseling sessions and the woman came with her daughter and she said she needed a child so desperately something began to happen in the life of the girl and she was almost it was becoming a psychosomatic condition and so true story now she came and said that um, she needed to confess something I said what is it madam and she said because of she she had to stay long not having a child and you know people started suggesting do this there's somebody is not exactly bad and so on and so forth she landed herself by the river and met this man and cried and said i need a child i'm tired of this and the man said that's all right i will give you that child but here is the condition true story that when that child becomes 20 years on the dot bring that child back to this place there is a sacrifice that must be done failure to do so everything will start going haywire and out of desperation said no she said but you are an old man you will be dead by then and she said he pointed a young boy who was playing around and said this boy will be the one seated here satan has a program for continuity by the time that lady became 20 years on the dot everything started falling apart in her life and she didn't know what was happening and so she came to her mother you know a lady talking to her mother and said mommy I don't know what is happening and the mom kept quiet and so she went to counsel with some women and some said let's pray some women said you better run run to that place quickly and so they decided to come to me and I said my God look at this now you will see such an innocent person and feel that this person is very innocent you are right except that it will take the power of God to correct that anomaly there are many homes today that are a product of this thing 
There are many lives today. There are many territories. No wonder you find out that there are territories where the gospel does not seem to thrive. You get there, missionaries will tell you. You get there, you love the Lord. One week, two weeks, something would happen. And you would have to leave that territory. It takes the supernatural to compel and to bring influence. When Jesus came and they started seeing possibilities that were not affordable as far as the world of men were concerned, they started to follow him. Anyone who walks with these five pillars must become an individual of influence. Growth and transformation, sustaining superior belief systems. Number two, value and productivity that you become productive all wise. Number three, wisdom and excellence. Number four, wealth and abundance. Number five, the supernatural. Let me wrap up by touching on the last subtopic, the geography of witness. Micah chapter 4, please, verse 1 and 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Micah chapter 4. Mm. But in the last days, it shall come to pass that Equa Plateau Church shall be established in the top of the mountains and it shall be exalted above the hills and all people shall flow to it verse 2 many nations will come very soon we'll stop going something god is doing in our midst was it not john wesley that said set yourself on fire and the nations will come to watch you burn and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways. In 1972, as you know, there were two great generals of the gospel. One of them, Lauren Cunningham, you know him. Youth with a mission. The other one was Bill Bright, the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ. Both of them went to bed and they woke up with the same dream. In that dream, they saw seven mountains. And that these mountains, they were told, were the spheres of influence that control and shape culture. Please, you have to listen to this as I wrap up. And from this, they came up with the concept that has come to be known in the body of Christ today as the seven mountain concept. The Bible says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains. That is influence. It was a prophetic revelation of what would happen before Christ comes. That suddenly the church of Christ will gain such dominance and influence and will now begin to rise above all other mountains. Now mountains in scripture don't just talk of obstacles alone. Mountains in scripture talk of spheres of influence or mind control systems. Hallelujah. That these are the mountains that shape culture. Every one of us here, every church on the plateau, Every individual on the plateau and across this nation is under the influence of one or more of these mountains. If the purposes of Christ would be preserved, it would be through allowing Jesus and his purposes to penetrate through these mountains. One more scripture and then I'll discuss them and then we'll pray. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Please let's read it together if you can see it. Ready? One, two, read. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Please leave that scripture there. Let's read it one more time. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Hallelujah. 
were intelligent people. Now let's look very carefully. He told them, go ye into. He never said, go around. That means, in as much as evangelism is powerful, there was something he was saying. Go ye into. If I say, go into a room, what do I mean? To enter and be submerged there. Enter the system. And then he uses all the world. Why did he add all there? How many walls do we have? A logical statement to be go to the world. But he says all the world. It means he was speaking of something else. Go ye into these systems and spheres of influence. And when you get there. Become an advocate of the purposes of God and ensure that every creature, not every man, every creature benefits from your influence. This is the mandate Jesus gave us. More than just going around to talk to people, he says, enter the system, all the world. And when you get there, your assignment is not just to do business. Your assignment is not just to be a professor, respectfully speaking. Your assignment is not just to be a parent. He says, enter the system. Let me list for you the seven mountains. In every society, these spheres of influence are the shapers and the molders of every civilization. The shapers and the molders of the ideologies in any and every society. There are seven of them. Are you ready? The first sphere of influence that controls men and their activities on earth is the mountain of religion. Please write it down. The mountain of religion. This is the sphere of influence that shapes the spiritual conviction of people across a territory. Everybody in a territory believes something. Even an atheist who does not believe anything believes himself. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? God must find men and women represented in this mountain. This is where preachers come in. The fivefold apostles and prophets. When people get a wrong ideology, it largely came from the pulpit. Sunday after Sunday, in Nigeria, we have services somewhere almost every day. Is that true? There is a conference, a convention, a Bible study, a program, a prayer meeting, a night vigil. Our churches are full of people who submit themselves without restraint to be mentored spiritually. If their spiritual convictions are wrong, it means that something wrong is coming from the pulpit. The mountain of religion. It was because Samuel was properly mentored by Eli. That was why he was able to rise even though Eli, the later part of his life, couldn't, you know, things went wrong. But we must give him the credit that he mentored Samuel. When God spoke to Samuel, he used the voice of Eli. So God will speak to you using the voice of your preacher. The sermons you hear every day. It means we must pray that God will send quality men to our pulpit. Let Satan not train rubbish and send nonsense to mount our pulpits. I say this respectfully speaking. Otherwise, there will be trouble in the next 5-10 years. Let me tell you something with Satan. When he finds out that he is unable to capture a generation because of their unbending loyalty, he will let them be and be patient while he prepares for the next generation. This is the tragedy of the West today. In the 60s and the 70s, most of these places you see today that have become a, a place of apology in the West, they were places of fire. These missionaries and evangelists and men and women of God, you read them, God's generals, all of these mighty people, but they made a mistake. And I pray we don't make it. They were concentrating on advancing the kingdom and forgot their future. They left their children behind. That was what Pharaoh told Moses. We will allow you go. 
let the men go but the children will stay behind Moses said no way we are all going we can't keep our future behind when Satan cannot fight you he will give up on you but you will now come and grow with your future let me tell you this whoever shapes the mind of the children while they grow is the person they will be loyal to when they grow you cannot appear into the future and the adulthood of anyone and claim a stake in their destiny no no it is the reason why we must invest and we must commit to training the children and sunday school is not a weak ministry that is what gives guarantee to the continuity of equa plateau church hallelujah so when satan found out that some of those black americans and those preachers would not give up and would serve jesus unto death he gave up on that generation and came back and met their children who were at home unattended to by the busy parents who were preaching the gospel and he said you know what i will grow with you those little children today are the presidents of nations the person who trained them while they were growing is the one they will be loyal to now that they are grown not to sound condemning but i am amazed at the level of enlightenment of this generation of our children coming up they will ask you questions that you cannot sleep as a small child my teacher said many of us are i'm coming to family but many of us have ignored this let me tell you the truth don't just think of where you are you must think of the next 10 years the next 20 years equa plateau church do not ignore the youth and the children whether we like it or not our parents and even us if christ tarries we will all be gone one day it's not bad news except if you are not born again we will be gone is the reason why businesses don't last i don't know any business that is up to 150 years old in africa we do not think succession no you go to europe you will see houses 200 years old you will see businesses 500 years old 400 years old because they built within it in the system the, a principle for continuity but many times in our nation and our region anything that lasts 10 years is old enough to die religion as i mentioned this this becomes our prayer point even for this conference lord raise pastors raise missionaries people of integrity and people who love jesus people who will love jesus more than money jesus more than fame jesus more than ministry jesus more than titles we should not just wish it we must pray it and trust god to raise people number two family the second sphere of influence that is responsible for shaping the mindsets of people family is very important hallelujah isn't it amazing that as a man of god when you are counseling people and they tell you they want to get married you have to verify whether the person they are marrying is of the opposite sex whoever whoever imagined that that would need to happen in the church are you marrying a male or a female it's terrible very terrible go and read about the tower of babel and sodom and gomorrah what brought them to decadence do you know that there are places when you go today even to preach there are things you cannot say they will jail you there are restrooms that they are, right now there are court cases happening simply because they designated the restroom male and female. And people say I should have the liberty to enter anyone depending on what I choose to be at that time. And can I tell you, don't think it's far from Nigeria. You will be surprised to know how many people are embracing these ideologies. There are fundings that never happen to institutions and organizations until they agree and accept that they will not fight any, you know, some kind of things. Every armed robber came from a family. Is that true? Every one of these Boko Haram people was born. 
can I tell you every national problem was first a regional problem that was not attended to every regional problem was first a community problem that was neglected and if you keep reducing it it will end in a family problem that was ignored I don't believe in abusing children I don't believe in all of this but let me tell you the truth we have to be careful respectfully speaking especially with our idea of love because what many parents are calling love is a recipe for disaster and destruction I will apologize at the end of my message but just allow me finish hallelujah we have to be careful when we were growing up there were certain disciplines whether in Sunday school or it was in secular school or home there were certain, now you come and meet a small child and he cannot say good morning he can even be putting his hand in your pocket and remove everything there and run oh come on please something is really wrong if that person becomes your president he will do exactly what he's doing hallelujah family the first revelation of jesus that children should see is as displayed by daddy and mommy that is the first revelation of jesus if all that the boy sees is abuse and irresponsibility even if he does not like it that is the only mindset he has he will become it inevitably hallelujah god must help us and there are people here that god is raising and granting that ministry to help families please don't give up in the name of jesus christ may god lift people who can help correct this mindset in the name of jesus christ number three very quickly our time is gone i have to end government and politics the third mountain that shapes and controls the mindset of people is the mountain of politics and government someone was asking me a question and he said what is my opinion about the Nigerian politics I said next question please <laughs> ask me the next question because I'm not sure that you are ready I don't I'm on air I don't want to my perspectives you see maybe my perspectives I'm used to being controversial my perspectives are usually somewhat disturbing you cannot select who you want and then ask me to choose any one of them no that's not liberty it's as simple as that hallelujah God has to help us one policy set by the devil through the guise of the parliament or government of and politics can shut the church regardless our prayer are rolling on the ground one person go and read your Bible in the book of Daniel when Daniel was praying unto God it was affecting the spirits of the Medes and the Persians and they had to come through politics to enact they didn't say we are attacking Daniel that would be too direct but they came and and they they agreed on a vote and they said for 30 days I pray that a day will not come when they would have to censor the church and send sermons from maybe a federal registry so you receive yours by text to preach hallelujah yes sir a particular broadcasting station approached me some years ago and they wanted to put my programs there and when i had a discussion with them i love them i don't condemn them but i was terribly disappointed at the conditions and the things they were putting i said if i do this this way will i be able to go to bed no I said no i'm grateful god bless you but this is not it we must trust god for grace there are some of you who are called into politics it's not just enough to pray we must obtain grace but let me tell you many politicians are not very serious with god that's the reason why when they get there because in politics you have to be in direct fraternity with the realm of the spirit either towards god 
or some kind of diabolic thing. Politics will stop you from being neutral. You know the number of Muslims that come to me for prayers, especially during election. They don't care. They mix anything and they hope one will work. At least they are honest. While they are crying to you, there is some charm somewhere, there is another thing somewhere, they just know one of them will work. And they come, once they hear you have results, you say in Jesus, you will be surprised. They kneel down. They watch TV. They are not stupid people. Can I tell you this? We don't have the time. I'm sorry for stretching you. But if you ever want to get into politics, you must be able to find a system where priesthood backs you. The formation of king, priest, prophet is a tripartite formation that must never be compromised if you want to do well in government. The reason is that politicians just believe I am a Christian. No, it takes more than being a Christian. There has to be priesthood backing you. Unbelievers know this. Forget the things that you see on TV. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. You will be surprised at the sacrifices. That is why they have confidence regardless your opinion. Their confidence is outsourced from a realm that is not earthly. May God grant us grace to have politicians like Daniel who will be uncompromising and yet will make impact, maximum impact. May God raise even within the plateau in this year and the years that come people across the various tiers of government it's painful and it's unfortunate and i say this respectfully so to know that our students have been kept this long at home i know you are sad it's unfortunate their contemporaries respectfully speaking in private universities and abroad have long gone and you will say life should be equal. It, it won't be, it, it won't balance like that. It will take favor and the grace of God. By the time the gentleman is graduating, he has passed the age for employment. Number four, education. I think I've said that already. Let's just pray that God will raise people. Imagine a professor who is born again, spirit filled with understanding. You can look at a student and know that this student is not just failing because he is dull. There is something more and you can lock your office and say, gentlemen, I know that I teach you in class. I'm a professor, but I'm a witness too. Let us pray. And that one prayer right there, the day that student is returning with his certificate. It is true. We must trust God not just for intellectuals but people who will use the tool of intellect. I don't know if they've changed it but many years ago, respectfully speaking, the motto of the Corpus, Islamic Corpus, their association was serving Islam through the nation. Not serving the nation. No, the nation is a tool. That is the mindset that is given to them. We must trust God and then education. It shapes our minds. I am praying in the name of Jesus that God will raise quality teachers and quality schools. If God is granting you a grace to build a school, please build it. Don't be afraid. Build it with confidence. We need standards. There are people today, respectfully speaking, who would graduate and you would tell them write a letter and they are writing it like a text message. You, like you. I am and you are wondering and this person graduated with something that is you understand what I'm saying 300 and something in jam and they cannot compose themselves to answer an intelligent question corruption has just eaten into the educational sector we have to trust God for grace may God raise institutions through us yeah. next is media media the word media means a channel, a vista. They will interpret good or evil. We understand good or evil from the lens of media. 
Did you know that as big and as large as Russia is, they have only one media house? Russia is about a little, uh, a little over half of Africa. And they have only one media house because of the power of media. Media can make you believe anything. An enemy can be a saint through media. A saint can be an enemy through media. Media is a powerful perception control system. Hallelujah. We must trust God for grace. To be able to raise and thank God also for social media. Even though it has its own negative effects. It's produced untold distractions. But if and when it is used properly, you can project Jesus in a way that will surprise you. Who would have known that I'll be standing from one point and you are speaking and everyone, not just seated on a TV, someone with his phone, with a device, anywhere across the globe. That is a powerful tool for evangelism and soul winning. Media is powerful. Let us not allow that space for Satan alone. We must occupy that space. God grants you grace to set up a media house, a TV station. Go for it in the name of Jesus. Provided you will do it with integrity. I am praying. Do you know? Let me tell you this. I had a vision many years ago. Before probably the first or second Christian media house came to this nation. And I saw 37 media Christian media stations. I said, where will this be? And looking at it today, I am amazed to see what God has done. Hallelujah. Number six, art and entertainment. That is the sixth mountain of influence. Art and entertainment. I don't want to talk much here. They control our dressing. They control our speech. They control how we understand and celebrate success. We have to trust God for people to rise to this mountain. This is the mountain that influences young people the most. This is the mountain where celebrities are found. This is the mountain where musicians are found. This is the mountain where sportsmen are found. It's amazing how that someone who has been well cultured for many years in one moment can sit under the influence of one or more of these people and destroy their values completely. We need to trust God to have people in the arts and entertainment that can represent the purposes of God. And then finally, the seventh mountain is the mountain of business and finance. This is the mountain that funds every other mountain. Whoever controls the economic flow controls the loyalty of people within a territory. Have you wondered why there is massive kidnapping going on in this nation? And every time those who are the kidnappers are caught, they will tell you they've never enjoyed even 100,000 from that money. So where did the 10 million go to? Where did the 100 million go to? Because there is a central remittance system. You see that now. They understand the power of economy. This service is happening right here. But I am sure the elders will tell you there was a budget for this conference. We have to trust God for people who are genuinely born again. Who love Jesus with all their hearts. And will be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom. For the sake of his majesty. I made up my mind as a man of God. That I would never teach and raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. I understand the power of economic influence. And I made a commitment that I would teach them the whole counsel of God. To the end that people be empowered. Empowerment is powerful. Hallelujah. I had the honor and the privilege of praying during the thanksgiving of one of the governors when he became a governor. I wasn't supposed to pray for him. I was in a meeting and then I was told he would be coming afterwards and they requested, they said, can I pray for him? I said, fine, that's, that's okay. I saw people in that church that except for the love of Jesus, I should be saying, what are you doing here? 
Do you know why they came? Because a man of economic means was to be prayed for. There are many people you don't need to invite to church. Just be blessed. They will come. It is true. If you want to speak to people who are seated on that mountain, it will take economic empowerment to be able to communicate the gospel. That is the truth. Because you see, respectfully speaking, wealth comes with pride. So if you are communicating the gospel, you have to sustain some level of economic empowerment for wealthy people to listen to you. Seven mountains. What you call your purpose or your assignment is simply the role that you have to play in one or more of these. You are a witness, but what you call your assignment is simply, this is what I'm living with you tonight as we pray. God is counting on you. For some, the mountain of religion, like the preachers. For some, family, education, government, arts, entertainment. Now, do you know why I'm saying this? Because there are several people who sense the call of God upon their life. But they think the only way to express the call of God is to be a man of God. It's a narrative that has been sold. And there are many people who are holding the mic today who should not be in fivefold fold meaning. They were only craving for an expression. And since they were told the only way to do ministry is to become a man of God, we have people who clearly you will know that this is not their assignment. But if everyone is now told that you can find expression right where you are, this is very powerful. We are going to pray. This is kingdom advance. Let me define it now and then we pray. What then is kingdom advance? Kingdom advancement refers to any and every scriptural means kingdom advance refers to any and every scriptural means deployed any and every scriptural means deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities kingdom advancement refers to every and any scriptural means deployed to advance Jesus Christ and his purposes to enthrone Jesus Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities so the next time you say we are advancing the kingdom. What it means is we will employ every and any scriptural means that can be deployed provided it will end up enthroning Jesus Christ in the hearts of men, evangelism, and across every strata influence. That is kingdom advance. So whether it is through your offering, through your singing, through your preaching, anything at all that is scriptural and can lead to the enthroning of Jesus Christ is kingdom advance. This is our mandate. The church is only as good as its ability to save sinners and to turn those people to become kingdom ambassadors, witnesses indeed. I'm your Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whoever you want to bless, Lord, you can bless through me. Who 
Whoever you want to lift, Lord, you can lift. That is the song of a witness. Whatever you want to start, Lord, you can start through me. Whatever you want to end, Lord, you can end through me. For I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. I'm yours. Jesus, I'm yours forevermore. Listen, can I tell you? The ones who will enjoy longevity, the ones who will enjoy the divine backing of heaven are not just those who say, I am a Christian, but those who are actively involved in this kingdom come project. There are people who the devil will not come and oppress anyhow. The jealousy of God has been invested over them by reason of the role that they play in the kingdom. It is these people that the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong, that he even reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You can be so involved in the program of God that he will invest his jealousy and his dedicated attention upon you. Can I tell you God loves everybody but he does not trust everybody. It is clear from scripture. We're wrapping up. This is my final session with us. And I'm hoping that I was able to contribute to fanning that flame within your spirit. To be at the epicenter of God's program. For some of you, the call tonight is to stop playing religion. God is calling you into an experience that is deeper and richer than just looking for food or building a house. These things are wonderful, but your life must be at the center of kingdom come. Someday, this life will come to an end, whether we like it or not. And I can tell you, when you stand before him, it's not the amount of cars you bought. As important as that is, it is not the educational or academic, it is not the, the entire, our definitions of success. Everything is only successful to the degree to which it reveals Jesus. Listen very carefully. We're wrapping up. Let this burn in your heart. This has been my drive. It's not ministry that is my drive. When it's all be said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness And find precious joy in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life is gone. At the end of your life, the hymn writer says, must I go an empty handed? Must I meet my savior so? He said, not one soul to greet him. Must I empty handed go? This is a call to go back to our lives and say, how much of my life 
is truly in God's kingdom come project. For some of us, you need to go back and find from these seven mountains the area allocated for you. And for some of you, you may be saying, dear man of God, I've missed it, time has gone. Then you can invest in training those who are coming. Let their success be a consolation to any failures that you may think you had. You are not a failure if you raise a success. No. You only fail when both you and the ones after you fail. There are three things I'm going to do right now. One is I'm going to make an altar call. And then number two, I requested that we come with our prayer request and just one minute very quickly, if I'll be given that privilege to speak over our requests and then generally just speak over our lives, particularly those who are trusting God for healing and for strength. I don't know if we can have um, whilst I'm making the altar call please may I request if you are yet for any reason to drop your prayer request may I please request that you gently without distracting especially for those outside may I request that you just wave it and there should be an usher thank you there should be an usher or someone there are still people waving please let's if we can just pick their request no you don't need to turn it I'll just pray on it there I want you to believe in the God of heaven who is about to arise for you we're wrapping up let your heart be open mm, mighty God now you are here seated inside and outside and you know that with all that I've said you need Jesus sincerely perhaps you were not here or you were not convicted enough the first time I made that call. This is our last session. Jesus is giving you a chance. Two calls in one. You are saying, I sincerely desire to make it right with Jesus. Tired of playing church, tired of playing games. I want to make this decision for Jesus. And then you are here and you are saying, Apostle, I love Jesus Christ, but for some reason, my life has plunged into a decline and I know that I'm not living as a Christian. I need to get things right. I need to rededicate my heart and my life to Jesus. Please may I request, I just have one minute for you because of our time. If you're here in the congregation, I will want to plead with you to please just come and stand here very quickly as I make that altar call. I'm going to count one to five. For those coming outside, um, once the stage here is filled, then we'll have to create an extra stage there. I know that there are people coming. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. Two. Are you coming to Jesus? Win that war finally over your life and destiny. Young and old, male and female, Jesus calls you into a new and a rich experience. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have life eternal. Are we celebrating them as they come? Very quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. If there are still more people, you could create a space for them outside and they just follow through the screens. The front is full here. I salute you. Thank you for the courage to come. The Bible says as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Mean it as you pray say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you died for me I believe 
that you rose again for my justification right now I receive you as my Savior I receive you as my Lord and I receive you as my King I declare that eternal life is mine right now in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones they have made this declaration of faith as touching their salvation I decree and declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God that you be grounded and established in righteousness in the name of Jesus from tonight and hence you go forward ever and backward never for in Jesus name I pray amen and amen someone direct me okay please all of you may I request that you move to my left which is your right let's celebrate them as they go the counselors hallelujah is it all right if i request that we stand please creator of the universe what can't you do what can't you do Jesus. Name above every name. Name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus. You are able. You are able. Great and mighty God. You are able. I ask you to stand because we're about to pray and all of you who are following by way of television you are following uh, through the internet I want you to believe right now it says unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come hallelujah now I just want you to stand in faith as I pray whilst you're standing I want you to agree and to begin to declare that in the name of Jesus these Egyptians I see today I will see them no more forever. Go ahead and begin to pray. Just whilst you are standing. I'm going to bow my knees and lay my hands upon this request. And you don't have to kneel with me. Let me bow my knees like Paul would do to pray. For the next one minute, I'd like you to agree. The God that has honored Equa Plateau Church for all these years is about to rise for you again. In the name of Jesus the Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion he says we were like them that dream I'm about to make some declarations over this and I just want you to believe the Bible says what things soever ye believe ye desire he says when ye pray believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it you can bring it please what things soever ye desire in the name of Jesus Christ the one who has honored Equa Plateau Church the one you serve and love and believe I decree and declare that everything written here that represents pain represents reproach 
represents any kind of discomfort i call upon my god right now in the name of jesus let it be turned to your testimony now let it be turned to your testimony now everything that is demonic that is the reason for this to be put here i call upon my god who is also your god may he arise on your case in the name of jesus christ i speak to you standing upon the grace of our fathers the eldership in this church that these egyptians you see today may you see them no more forever may you see them no more forever in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for you now in the name of jesus christ um i know that it's not something strange please if there's anyone on there the anointing close to you just help them we're not so that we don't get distracted in the name of jesus i am praying there are people who have not been able to move forward he said moses tell the people that they go forward it is God that moves people forward, but he puts that word in the lips of men. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, go forward. I decree and declare, make progress with your life. Hallelujah. I'm praying for you now, but the Lord is putting in my spirit, I'm seeing the number six and there are six people here there's been all kinds of oppression over your family i'm praying right now please i want you to help them i just saw fire the lord is bringing deliverance i command every demon every principality this is the church of the lord jesus christ every spirit behind the problems of people in this church every spirit behind the pain and the stagnation of god's people in the name of jesus the son of the living god be free now for the bible says he that the son sets free is free indeed i declare your liberty now in the name of jesus christ hear me every orchestration of darkness every legal claim that satan is making over your life the bible says blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us i stand upon the faith of our fathers and i decree and declare be delivered now activities of witchcraft and culture by the power that raised christ from the dead be set free now let me pray for your spiritual life everything that has brought your spiritual life down you were not like this before now your fire has gone down now your word study life has gone down may fresh fire come upon your life in the name of jesus christ listen to me the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren the mother called him jabez because she bore him in sorrow and he got to a point where he said oh that thou wouldest bless me i'm praying for someone here that in the name of jesus that name ichabod that name jabez that means the departure of the glory we change it right now over your life in the name of jesus christ hallelujah I was contemplating whether I should share this vision or not because I didn't want to create any problem. But while I sat down there before I came up, I looked and I saw it was like a dark, a dark blanket just over this building. And the Lord said to lift it, that there is something that has pressed this. I don't know what it is, I'm just coming here. But I stand in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that everything that has tied down this church by the power that raised Christ from the dead lift up your heads O ye gates lift up your heads O ye gates over Equa 
to church lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted up everlasting doors in the name of Jesus hallelujah the plague of sudden death in this church in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now hallelujah hear me anybody who says let us see what you will become indeed they will see God lift you indeed they will see God honor you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah let me pray for every home here everything that represents shame and reproach it looks like you are serving God and people are saying where is the evidence may God use your results to answer them in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please hear me there is something in the Bible called the book of remembrance I am a product of the sacrifice of this church do you know there was a time where Mordecai saved the king and he was not rewarded the Bible says that night could not the king sleep may tonight be that night he said bring me the chronicles and he said who has rewarded this man many of you have raised others like me but nobody has come back to reward you may my God who is a covenant keeping God begin to visit you begin to visit you begin to visit you Sunday school teachers may my God visit you different departments elders who have labored in this church may this be the season where my God will visit you hallelujah for the families that are here I want to prophesy Psalm 112 he says blessed is the man that feared the Lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth that the generation of the upright shall be blessed he says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever I decree and declare no family here will be an instrument of shame and mockery in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for the youth in this church let there be an emergence of young men on fire responsible young men and women dedicated young men and women this church will never lack hands to hold up the banner of the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me anybody that walks into this church assigned by Satan to bring down the work we build a spiritual fortification and we decree and declare Equa Plateau Church you will not die Equa Plateau Church you will not fall Equa Plateau Church you will not fail it is from glory to glory to glory to glory finally I decree and declare the spirit of unity like never before the spirit of love hear me please this night is a night that all grievances all issues if there be any no matter how age long when God the Bible says you cannot put an old wine a new wine in an old wine skin for many of you here maybe grievances with parents grievances with elders listen let me tell you this when God is doing a new thing you must be like Joseph let go he said this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press I press I press that every EPC member who is seen will be known by their love genuine love for Jesus and genuine love one for another I decree and declare may the spirit of love rest upon everyone in the name of Jesus Christ and that next year by this time you will be a thousand times greater 
may men and women of influence rise from this church influence even in government influence in business influence in media in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Heavenly Father I want to thank every one of you sincerely our elders my wonderful parents my dad and mom is here can you please help me bless God for them hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and the entire committee that made it possible for me to come it is an honor I do not take this for granted thank you for giving me the opportunity to bring Jesus I'm truly honored may the Lord bless you let it be for us all from glory to glory I forgot I said I was going to pray for the sick would you spare me a minute for that please if you are trusting God for healing just lay your hands on your chest we'll just do this in one minute I believe in the healing power of Jesus I am a product of his healing ministry I can see online prayer requests someone is saying healing for my dad from prostate cancer deliverance for my brother from every bad vice Jesus Christ still heals it is true that he does hallelujah let me just pray that prayer in one minute because there are people here who the doctors are doing their best and we pray that God will empower them to continue but there are many infirmities whose origin is from the spirit whether it is high blood pressure whether it is cancer diabetes bone conditions eye conditions the Bible says he healed them all therefore in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I bring life and healing to your body life and healing to your body be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus I declare that that pain leaves right now in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you you may need to go and see a doctor even after this conference and you will find out that things have changed I decree and declare it is so for you according to the word of the Lord in Jesus name thank you so very much and may the Lord bless you and God bless you church let's put those hands together for Jesus Thank you so much, Apostle. We celebrate God in your life and we love you so much. Please, one more time, put your hands together for Jesus. Please, you may take your seat for a minute. Just before I call on the church secretary to come up and then after he's done with what he wants to do, he will take the benediction. Just to announce that on your way out, there are offering baskets. Uh, people have been asking of ways to give. And so we've created opportunity for people to give. Um, our online community, please, you can give online. The account details will be up right about now. Uh, you can give online. And on your way out, please, you can give uh, in the baskets as well. Uh, service, this conference continues tomorrow, wraps up tomorrow, actually. And it's for 10 a.m., but worship starts at 9, so you may want to be here on time, and the Lord will bless us real good. For tomorrow, we are asking that please, ladies, do not come with handbags. Please do not come with handbags. If you are with your purse or your Bible, that is good enough. Please do not come with handbags. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I've been around for quite a few years. I've never seen an evening that is so packed full. But it's a testament to the fact that God is at work. And that he's still in the business of bringing men and women to the kingdom. On behalf of Equa Plateau Church, would like to say a big, big thank you to our brother, our son, and our own Apostle Joshua Selman.
It took a long time to get you. But we didn't lose hope because we knew God was at work. Thank you for squeezing time out of your very busy schedule to be with us over this weekend. Our prayer is that the virtue that has gone out of you, the master himself will reveal you. Thank you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.